that's that's actually quite old. It's a it's an article from 2017, and uh, and I I remember reading it very briefly the summer of 2017, but I've had it saved for a long time to talk about. Um, and you know, at this point, I thought this would be a fun way to discuss it. Uh, can a can a president be robot? Can a robot be a president? Instead of the way that I phrased it first. Oh, uh, can a president uh, robot? Can they can they robot it out? Is it avail Is that dance move <laughs> available to a president? Uh, can a robot be pre uh, a president? That's uh, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question, especially as we approach into the uh, into the era of AI. It's a very interesting question. Now, a lot of this is going to depend on um, how the AI how the, the, the robot is, um, is programmed, right? And there's a lot of benefits that they, that they talk about. There's limitations to the human brain right now um, because, uh, because we, have to, we have to get over things like ego and profit um, and keeping this meat suit alive. And, um, you know, there, there's a lot of things that are preventing the evolution of the brain. We need to stop thinking out of fear. That's a limitation that human beings have right now. Uh, we, we let a very small portion of, the, of, of our brain control a vast majority of the decisions that we make. Um, you know, so uh, there are limitations to what the human brain can achieve because of all, all of the, uh, y you know, it, it, it has to fight the meat suit in a sense, is we are... I brought this up in the live stream the other day is we are programmed for a lot of kindness and empathy. Um, that's actually like that, that is a beneficial trait to us. It's actually in there to help us survive. It's a, it's a, it's a deep rooted biological response. And yet we fight that deep rooted biological response by giving more into fear and more into exploitation and, and, uh, and, and veering our behaviors and decisions down that path, which I think is has limited and stunted the growth and evolution of our brain and what we're capable of. Right, um, uh, a computer wouldn't have to do that. Wouldn't have to to deal with those limitations. Um, it can compute large amounts of data, various different types of data simultaneously, all at once. Um, and one of the biggest things that they say is, well, uh, an AI or a robot can't be bought off. You can't buy off um, uh, an AI. But this is where my initial statement comes in. What is it programmed to do? That's going to be very important. What is it programmed to do? Now, if it's programmed to look at things in a, in a logical, um, altruistic manner of what is the best outcome for humanity, uh, you know, based on what data is available. Great. I, I, I don't think we have to worry about it being influenced by money. But if you add a profit motive into its decision making that this is all dependent um, by the central focal point of profitability, of making money, then yeah, it can be bought off because its programming is written to be that way. So if you're going to make this work, you're going to have to make it a blank system, an algorithmic um, computation that is specifically built to look at problems in an objective manner without the lens of, of profit motives, of the stock exchange, of Wall Street. It's just what is best for the largest amount of people. And that's, what, that's what it needs to look at, right? Uh, so another question that, that they ask is uh, algorithmic AI processes, right? Can an AI be smarter than its own programming? That would kind of subvert it. So even if you program it for, I, I believe that even if you program it for the, the basis of profit motive, can it transcend that programming to say, well, this profit motive goes against survivability. It goes against uh, logic and altruism and all these other traits that, that um, are necessary in making this thing work, uh, can it subvert that? Some people say yes, and some people say that that's already happening with with all of the the learning the, the learning AIs that we have in place. Um, 
with with uh, predictive text, with predictive algorithms of, of social media and all of these other corporations have like recommended videos based on what you've already watched. Like these, these are learning programs. Um, so in, in a sense, it might take a little while, but yeah, I think uh, eventually you can get a, an AI that surpasses its own programming, right? Which is very interesting, very cool. Um, there's this thing called metacognitive thinking. Uh, metacognitive thinking is creative thinking essentially it's adaptive thinking um and basically the this goes into the notion of the singularity is can you get to a point where an ai um works as an ai but you can't tell that it's an ai uh you can't tell that it's 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 some sort of a robot or an android you it, it just it's functioning so well it's got this cognitive thinking it's got this creative element of thinking it's this creative problem solving type stuff that it's doing um so you know if it gets to that point can the singularity be something positive in a sense that it will legislate and dictate thoughts plans and ideas uh without these sort of hindrances that are in the way, um, very human hindrances, I think, you know, um, now people that come, uh, that kind of oppose this idea came out and said, well, you can definitely put biases into programming, which is the initial statement that I made, um, is what's in the programming of this AI, uh, and you can program biases into AI. And that's very evident in, in, in the way that we're seeing Facebook and YouTube, uh, the way that they deal with their algorithms. They're picking out certain words. They're, they're scanning through to hear certain ideas. Um, and they can limit, restrict, or completely prohibit certain ideas from ever being expressed on their platform. Now... Whether that's right or wrong is, is sort of not the debate that we're having. Um, it's the fact that can you put program by... Yes, you totally fucking can. Uh, 100%. You know, we just saw that last week when all this stuff was, was in the beginning of it where GoFundMes, virtual tip jars, articles about, um, about the, the virus were all getting knocked out. They were all being called... Um, uh, community uh, going against community standards and spam. Um, Twitter was going to do the same thing. Uh, YouTube came out and basically said we have the right to. Our algorithm is going to decide, um, you know, uh, what uh, what content can be can be you know shown on our platform and what content doesn't. We don't have humans regulating that stuff anymore. So this is just what it's going to be for a while. Um, and it's like, no, you programmed the algorithm to look for specific content and fucking knock it out or, or suppress it or whatever. So we're already kind of seeing that. We're already seeing these biases in effect. Uh, and it's very real. So for people that are just, they're, they're saying, well, it's not possible. It is. We've seen it. The, the programming on computers is going to be, is going to be very real. Like it's, it's already happening. Uh, so in terms of in terms of this, until we can figure out how to create a completely unbiased algorithmic program uh, that is going to learn, um, that is going to make, you know, metacognitive uh, decisions, some creative thought decisions, we're probably not ready for this yet. Now, can we have a human machine team up? Can we have some sort of uh, problem solving algorithmic uh, AI software that leaders in the world can use perhaps for a crisis that we're facing now would that would that be something that is recommended and that would be an interesting thing to see I think that'd be a very interesting thing to see um, I don't know how well it would work because at the end of the day it would it would fall into the decision of the human leader to follow through on what the um, AI is is telling them to do so if if we're talking about someone that's ego driven and narcissistic 
that can't deal with um, a solution that was derived by a non-organic being, then I think we're going to fall into the same problems that, that we're in now, right? Which is a bunch of chest, chest thumping and I got to be the one that saves the human race kind of bullshit that, that no one really has time for. So um, really, even if we do a human machine team up, it's going to it's going to relate on back to our own programming, which is can we get over the profit motives? Can we get over our own ego? Can we get over making decisions out of overwhelming fear and anxiety all the time? It's a good question to ask. Um, now the the con the concern with an AI, let's we'll, we'll go we'll go into a hypothetic reality for for a minute if if we can indulge ourselves <clears throat> in that reality. The the concern there in this hypothetical reality would be that human emotions uh, would not be regarded as relevant in making a lot of these decisions, right? Um, if we get uh, a a AI with with a strong um, algorithm in place uh, with no biases and this metacognitive thinking and we hit that singularity um, and we have this AI that is going to look at some of our uh, major problems, major systemic issues that we're seeing and it's going to look at it through this objective lens, through this creative thinking lens. I don't think it's going to regard emotionality as a major factor to play into all of this. It's going to look at what is the end result of each of these things. So if we're going to look at healthcare, that's more about taking care of sick people and preventative care. So it's going to come up with a plan based on available data uh, to say this is what we need to push forward with. And it might be a universal healthcare plan. It might not be, you know. Um, but it'll it'll come up with something that is going to be uh, a plan that's rooted in taking care of sick people and preventative care. <clears throat> that's what it's going to be rooted in. Education will become about knowledge and curiosity. Uh, so determining how people need to, to teach things and uh, what we are looking at education in the lens of um, will become knowledge and curiosity. Uh, policing. I think policing is probably going to be another subject matter that's going to be very different under President Robot. Uh, uh, President Android? Android would probably be the more accurate term. Uh, but policing would be about the varying degrees in how you uphold a law. Uh, so I bet a nonviolent offense or, or protest won't be criminalized. Because it, it would probably deem that illogical. It would probably deem that as as a, uh, as fundamentally a violation of freedom Fund in, in you know maybe the law is more flexible about that sort of stuff and it won't be this corporal punishment aspect of things um, climate change would be about preservation of the planet uh, you know a lot of these things are going to wind up having no financial motive it you know if we can design a ai um, to to go about this. And uh, really what I'm trying to say is unless we program a financial incentive in, um, it, if, if, if we remove that, it just, it becomes, it becomes more about the, the altruistic way, the cooperative way that we need to take care of each other. We need to take care of the planet. Um, and, we won't be having these sort of arguments back and forth about stimulus packages and shit like that. Uh, so really, I think the um, the the uh, the the entity that that might need to be president in twenty twenty to help us, you know, kind of get through these problems is uh, Lieutenant Commander Data uh, from Star Trek: Next Generation. Uh, and sure, I might be biased, and everybody's probably going, Chris, we get it. You're watching Star Trek. We get it, buddy. Uh, but uh, but hear me out. 
I think Lieutenant Commander Data fits all of those things. He has a positronic brain. He's trying to understand human emotions, right? He gets he gets human emotions, and he, uh, or at least he has an understanding of where these emotions uh, come from, or or at least a working understanding of them. Uh, and uh, he sees these problems. He makes various different computations all at the same time. Uh, he can come up with various different solutions and percentages of how well they're going to work and what we need to do. Uh, so you know, I'm I'm saying uh, I'm saying data 2020, data 2020. That's what we need. We need that positronic brain in action. Uh, and uh, and I bet we'd be able to get all of these uh, all these problems taken care of uh, probably in like less than a week. So so that's what I'm advocating for. <laughs> Data 2020. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want, baby. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be making daily videos, so make sure you come back to this channel. Make sure that you are subscribed. You hit that bell so you're getting the notifications uh, because we are going to be putting up videos every single day. Uh, keeping you guys updated on what's going on around the world, keeping our critical thinking skills uh, up to date as well, uh, talking about some interesting ideas, talking about some topics that you won't hear on your corporate mainstream outlets. Um, I'm also a touring stand-up comedian, uh, but uh, at the moment, I don't have any live stand-up comedy dates to tell you guys about. So, uh, if you have the means to and would like to, to, to donate to this channel, to donate to um, creating videos to improve the quality and quantity of these videos, feel free by, do, uh, by going to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. There you will find various different ways that you can either become a sustaining member uh, via those big orange buttons Patreon, Bandcamp, and even PayPal, uh, or by just making a one-time donation uh, via the aforementioned PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, uh, whatever you feel most comfortable doing, and that's if you have the means to do it. I understand that we're all struggling through this time, uh, so all of these videos are going to be available for free, and like I said, will be up every single day, and a huge way that you can help uh, is by sharing these out. Uh, hit it, hit it up on your social feeds, on on the on the Twitters and the and the alternative social feeds and the Instagrams and the Facebooks. Just share it around. Tell it, tell as many people as you possibly can. Uh, especially if you enjoy uh, the topics that we are discussing on this channel. And once again, make sure that you are subscribed. You hit that like button um, and get uh, get new eyes on this channel. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I, I, and everybody that's already become a sustaining member or a patron um, or has donated, uh, thank you so much. It really, really means a lot, and it helps. Every little tiny bit helps in uh, in in in, the, in this time of of need. So uh, be good to each other, stay safe out there, and we'll see you tomorrow with new videos.